Hello, and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With. Today, I'm talking to Jonathan Ashworth, Shadow Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. Um, we're discussing pharmacist prescribing and the wider role of pharmacy in healthcare. Mr. Ashworth, why don't you start by introducing yourself? Hello, well, I'm Jonathan Ashworth. I'm the Shadow Secretary of State for Health and Social Care. So that means I'm the Labour Party's lead spokesperson on health and care matters. It was recently suggested that pharmacists should be given the right to prescribe so that GPs could spend more time with patients. And this came as a bit of a surprise to many of us because as you yourself tweeted, pharmacists can already prescribe and are doing so. How would a Labour government make the best use of pharmacists' skills and expertise? Well, it was surprising because, as we've known for about, gosh, 15, 16 years or so, uh, community pharmacists have been able to prescribe. And I think there's around, not everyone has uh, does it, uh, is, is able to do it, but I think there's, the last time I looked at the figures, something in the region around 12,000, I think, roughly 20% or so. I mean, I, 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 I start from the position of being a huge fan and champion of community pharmacy. Uh, partly because I'm sat here in Leicester, where I'm a member of parliament, where we have uh, community pharmacy is an incredibly important part of our health ecosystem here, if you like. And there's many people in Leicester who go to work in community pharmacy. And I became particularly interested in community pharmacy about five years ago, when I started in this role as the Shadow Health Secretary, when the government at the time were cutting the, the investment going into community pharmacy. And we were very fearful that we'd lose a number of community pharmacists from our high streets. And indeed, we have lost some community pharmacists from our high streets as a consequence, or indeed community pharmacists have had to come back, cut back of some of the services they offer. And I remember throwing myself into the ca that campaign and it became absolutely crystal clear to me that, uh, that community pharmacy is a vital part of healthcare. It's a vital part of providing patients with the quality care that they deserve that community pharmacy should be properly integrated with community care, with primary care as well. Uh, and if it isn't, then you'll see these huge burdens on other aspects of, of the healthcare system. So yes, it's important that we do all we can to increase um, the investment available and the training available so that the pharmacists can take up the options to, be, to move into prescribing. If you remember, it was the last Labour government who, towards the end of the Labour government, were looking at moving to a sort of ailment first service in community pharmacy, which would have given the community pharmacists more of a role in managing uh, uh, and conditions and, and, re and responding to illnesses that people have. I think that's a really important that we, that we return to that broader vision. Um, I know Scotland are doing something similar now uh, as well, because community pharmacists can offer so much, not just in terms of self-care, but they should be able to look at prescribing. They should be able to look at appropriate uh, medications. You should be able to get repeat prescriptions, usually through electronic means. The technology is there these days. And of course, there's a massive role for community pharmacy in some of the other wellness services that, we sh that can be offered, you know, blood pressure checks, lung checks, help with smoking cessation as well. There's a whole range of things that we should be mobilizing community pharmacy to do. And of course, vaccination. You know, uh, and I'm, I've not had my flu jab yet, but I will, I always make sure I get my flu jab at a community pharmacist just to highlight the important role of, uh, 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 of community pharmacy in delivering the flu jabs. And of course, they need to be mobilised further to do more COVID jabs as well, in my view. Now, increasingly, we're seeing primary care pharmacists, that's prescribing pharmacists usually, working alongside GPs in their surgeries. Do you have a view on how this might be developed further? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got to look at how we now really uh, uh, reform the way in which we deliver general practice or general practices delivered in this country. Community pharmacy must be a key part of that, a well, uh, alongside a, a wider range of skilled health professionals providing clinical care. But having this discussion on the day in which the health secretary has announced 250 million community pharma, uh, beg your pardon, for general practice. Uh, he's been criticising GPs for not doing face-to-face -face appointments, even though Matt Hancock, pre the pandemic, was encouraging GPs to move to Skype 
an app-based uh, 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 appointment. Well, they've now you turned on that. Uh, uh, but let's be absolutely honest. What has been announced today will not fix the long-standing pressures in general practice because we're short of GPs, we're short of practice nurses, we're short of district nurses, and there are not enough community pharmacists working in, in tandem with GPs in general practice. And, and I think we've got to be honest about this and look at how some of these models work. I mean, there is a, there is a, I, I want to see more community pharmacists working in general practice. I want to see more, uh, you, you, there are obviously uh, uh, nurses can prescribe in certain conditions as well. That has to be a, an element of it. You need to make sure you've got occupational therapists, physiotherapists properly joined up. And when we know that mental health is an increasing burden, you need to have proper mental health support in general practice uh, as well. But if you can get community pharmacists, whether based on the on the street corner or in the surgery, doing more high blood pressure checks, helping people manage cholesterol, helping people manage um, uh, uh, cease smoking, perhaps lung, lung checks as well, I think you can have a much better uh, um, primary care offer in this country than what we have but one of the problems we got is the way in which the funding is working and when you see in certain parts of the country Centene which is a US health insurance uh, firm or, 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 or it's, uh, you know it's um, part of a US health insurance firm taking over general practice that's essentially because um, they'll take over the the business side of it the running of it and so on there should be a public sector offer there should be a public sector model for that, but there isn't at the moment. So I think we are interested in, and I am interested in, in quite far reaching reform, but I want to do that in partnership with community pharmacists. So um, this is an offer to community pharmacists who are reading or watching this discussion that I want to hear from you about how we transform the way in which we provide community care in this country. That's a great offer. Thank you. We'll put the details on our website.